at Shilom about the house of Eli. Stop there. Somebody shout amen. amen. Listen to me. There is nothing that can stop you as a child of God if your mouth is open. Make sure you give me your ears. Because the Bible said something that a living dog is better than a dead lion. So as far as your mouth can be open, there is hope for you for change. From that passage we read, the Bible said there was a man called Abiata. First Kings chapter 2 verse 20 says, Who was Abiata? Abiata was a priest unto David. Abiata was not just a priest. He was a man that fought many battles with David. He was a man that went through all manners of difficulties with David. He went through all manners of pain with David. He was persecuted alongside with David. But the Bible says after the death of David, a man called Solomon was made king. That was the son of David. When Solomon was made king, Solomon sent for Abiathar. He said, Abiathar, come to me. I am supposed to promote you. Abiathar slept in the night and he woke up in the morning thinking he was supposed to be promoted. He woke up in the morning thinking he was supposed to be elevated. He woke up in the morning thinking a, a place for divine, for divine promotion has come for him. He never knew that that would be the end of his chapter. The Bible said when Solomon sent for Abiathar, he said, Abiathar, come to me. When Abiathar came, that was the, 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 the he received the shocking news of his life. He said, Abiathar, I know you and I know what you've been through with my father. But Abiathar, I am supposed to kill you, but I will not kill you. Remove everything that made you a priest. Remove everything that made you a pastor. Go back to your village. Go back to your father's house. For I have denounced you. When the Lord opened my eyes, I, I started making a case study. I discovered that Abiata came from the generation of Eli. Who was Eli? Eli was a priest that served God. Eli was not just a priest. The Bible says that Eli was a man who has honor who has integrity but because two of his sons the bible said they committed so much atrocity before the lord the bible said they did so manners of evil before the lord eli did not tell them to stop and god laid a curse on the generation of eli listen to me permit me to preach a message tied to crossing the line somebody shout crossing the line crossing the line somebody shout crossing the line crossing the line i can't hear say crossing the line Abiata did not check his foundation. Abiata did not ask questions. Abiata was made a priest and he thought because he was a pastor, he has escaped foundational powers. And he thought because he was a pastor, he has escaped the causes from his generation. Oh my God. The Bible says when Solomon called Abiata, Solomon demoted Abiata, and that was the end of priesthood in the generation of Ella according to the word of the Lord. Child of God, permit me. There are certain stages of your life you might want to climb. Some of you started well, but all of a sudden you see yourself, things are happening, but you don't know what is happening to you. Some of you, you look at your life, you pray, you fasted, but any time it seems as if you are praying and fasting, that is when you seem as if the problem is coming to its toe. There are some of you here under the sound of my voice. They've given you prophecy, but yet prophecy cannot change your situation. Why? Because you've refused to check your foundation. Child of God, before you rise in life, check your foundation. Before you climb certain ladders in life, check your foundation. Before you go to school, come out and become a medical doctor, check your foundation. The reason why you are, you are sick after many much prayers is because there is something from your foundation that is fighting you. But I came here to announce to somebody, any power that is fighting to your destiny, yeah. any power yeah. that is fighting your glory, yeah. as I hear one amen from you, yeah. you are crossing the line. Yeah. I say 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 you are crossing the line. Yeah. Lift up your voice and shout fire. Listen to 
me, you don't understand. This was a man that is a, listen to me, let me tell you something. I discovered something. A lot of people, they abuse, they abuse the position that is supposed to help them. Do you know that Abiata was a pastor, but Abiata was not a prophet? Hmm. If Abiata had discovered a prophet, his generation wouldn't have ended. True. Listen to me, let me tell you something. I see a lot of people in position. They make you the choir leader. All of a sudden, you started becoming prideful because they make you a pastor in church and you are rubbing shoulder with your prophet because they've given you a position and you think you know the Bible more than your prophet. You come to church and you are sitting like this. You don't know that your prophet is your prophet. You don't know that your prophet is your ladder. You don't know that your prophet is your growth and your glory. There are some of you here on, sitting under the sound of my voice. I came to understand by divine revelation. The reason why you are in that level is because you spoke against your prophet. The reason why you are in that level is because you've killed your prophet. The reason why you are in that level is because you've exalted yourself above your prophet. I came here with my eyes open. To every one of you that is expecting a change from divinity. As far as your mouth can be open, I prophesy. Before yeah. 2021 come to an end, yeah. may the Lord show you mercy for favor. Amen. I say, may the Lord show you mercy for favor. Amen. If I hear your amen, God is remembering you from that place to another level. Amen. Your prophet is your prophet. Amen. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. The worst thing that can ever happen to a man is to live a life without fulfilling your prophecy. True. The graveyard is full with a lot of vision. It's full with a lot of prophecy, dead prophecy. They could not fulfill it. Why? Because they've killed their prophets. Very true. This generation, they know how to trivialize a lot of things. They know how to abuse the anointing from the altar. And you've become so familiar with the things of God. Yes. Spirituality is not ideology. Is. Spirituality is not, is, not, is not in books. There are certain things about the spirit you can never find in your book. That you are educated doesn't mean that you are anointed. Yes. That you are educated doesn't mean you are spiritual. Yes. Listen to me, let me tell you something. Destiny is not about speaking English language. Yes. You can speak English language from now to tomorrow and your prophet comes and tell you, oh. leave it and it's over. Listen to me, let me tell you something. Hey. Some of you here under the sound of my voice. The Lord told me that their hearts will repent against their prophets. Yeah. Their hearts, their hearts. Some of you, your heart is about to repent. Because I know after this service, by the reason of divine ordination, yes. anything you are looking for, as I stand on this altar, Hallelujah! I prophesy Amen. as I open my eyes yeah. before the service comes to an end, yeah. it shall be delivered to your life. Amen. I say it shall be delivered to your life. It shall be delivered to your life. If there is anyone here praying for marriage, if there is anyone here praying for job opportunities, yeah. if there is anyone here praying for God to open your door, yeah. as I stand on this altar, Amen. I prophesy, Amen. receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. For you don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. When he says yes, no man can say no. When he open your door, no man can close it. When he lifts you up, no man can lift your time. I prophesy between now and the remaining days to do that. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is about to happen to your life. Something good is
see truth is about to happen to your life. Amen. Somebody shout fire. fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Number one, if you must cross the line, connect to your prophet. Amen. Let me tell you something. I've come to understand that anointing does not look on sizes. It is not about the size. It's not about the size. Anointing does not look on sizes. Yes. Let me tell you something. Some years back, you know, uh, Papa Apostle Joseph Suleiman, or something happened then. I was like, I can succeed on my own. I don't need him. Why do I need him? He can prophesy, I can prophesy. He can pray, I can pray. <laughs> I don't understand that there are different, there are different levels of grace and rankings in the spirits. I thought I could do it on my own. In less than one year, I, I, I fell to zero level. In less than one year, I fell. I don't know what was happening to me. I can pray, I can fast. It's not about your prayer. It's mm. not about your fasting. Yes. There are many people I know that can pray more than you. Mm. They are on the mountain praying from year to year, but you have nothing to show for. Mm. Why? Because they've refused to honor their prophets. Who do you honor? Listen to me. Listen to me. Who do you honor? Ask yourself, who do you honor? Ask your neighbor, who do you honor? Ask your neighbor, who do you honor? They cannot talk again. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. It is an error for a child to sit there and begin to see what the father is seeing. It is an error for a child to sit down and begin to think that he can do better than his fathers. It is an error for a child to sit down and think he can come out of battles on his own. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. The Bible said by a prophet, he brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. There is an anointing that comes upon a prophet that is brutal. So when a prophet step into your family mm. and say, oh you which die, the witch yeah, die. Yeah, when, yeah, a prophet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. when a prophet appear in your situation yeah. and he looks in your situation yeah. and he say, oh your water is bitter and the land is bad. Yeah. He say, I declare from today, open doors and he say, I declare from today you are blessed, you become blessed. Yeah. Right of God, yeah. I stand by the weight as a prophet. Yes. I stand upon my calling as a prophet. Yes. And I prophesy to every one of you here. Yes. Any witches and wizards in your family. Yes. They have sat on their evil coffin. And they make evil prophecy against you. They have sat on their evil coffin. And they said that you will not make it. They have sat on their evil coffin. They say your life will not be better as I sit on this altar. I receive they are. I, I command them to die. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes. Woo. Do something. Listen to me, let me tell you something. Open your Bible to the book of Zechariah, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm. Zechariah 2. The first thing you need to cross the line, I said number one is your prophets. My number prophet. two, your prophets. My prophets. Yes, your prophets. My prophets. Number two, listen. Lazarus was a friend to Jesus. Jesus was a prophet. I believe before Lazarus died, before Lazarus died, he have or he has every access to meet his prophet, which was Jesus. But because of familiarity, familiarity made the sickness killed him. Familiarity made him he died as a non-entity. He couldn't even build a house. Yeah. Lazarus did not build a house. He did not own even a donkey or an ass. Listen to me. Instead
instead of looking for a rich man, why not look for your prophets? My prophet. Okay, Zechariah 2 verse 1. Are you there? Okay. Zechariah 2 verse 1. Okay. Then I looked up, and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. Okay. I asked, where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem and find out how wild and long it is. Three. Then the angel who was speaking to me left. And another angel came to meet him, for, and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls before of the great number of men and less talk in it. Hallelujah. Start again, please, start again. Zechariah 2.1 Okay. Then I looked up. I looked up. And there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. Before me was a man. I asked. Mesh with a measuring what? Measuring line. What are they calling measuring line in Swahili? Lambo. Like a tape. Kabiro. Eh? Kabiro. Kabiro? Yeah, Kabiro. Okay, Kabiro. <laughs> continue, continue. I asked. Where are you going? Where are you going, okay? He answered me. Okay. To measure Jerusalem. To measure Jerusalem. To find out how wild and how long it is. Stop there. Somebody shout fire. fire. If you read from that Bible text, this was a vision that was shown to a man. The Bible says he saw another man. He didn't see his face. The man was with a tape measuring his destiny. There are certain set of people here. The reason why anytime you want to cross to the other side, it seems as if you are starting life again. is because somebody somewhere is holding a measurement in his hand that you will not cross certain level. If you read your Bible very well, in the same Zechariah, the Bible says, Who is that man before Serubadeh? He said it shall be met with. The Bible did not say it is a it is a thing. It said who that means who is a person. There are some of you. I have come to discover that every year your life is in danger. You look at your pocket, you are empty. You look at your bank account, you are empty. You cannot save money for yourself. You cannot save money for your family. Anytime you look at your family, sickness is upon sickness. Anytime you look at yourself, it seems as if you are in the same level. Type of God, I have come here with a brutal judgmental anointing. There are certain people here under the sound of my voice. They will not let you go until you kill them. I came here with a judgmental sword. Any witch from your village, any man that has vowed you will not cross it. Any man that has vowed you will not succeed. I prophesy. If you can jump up and shout amen, I prophesy the obituary. I say I prophesy the obituary. I say I prophesy the obituary. Lift up your voice and shout amen like thunder. Number two things. Number one, you must you must build a life of sacrifice. Listen to me. A lot of people don't know what sacrifice is. Giving money alone is not only sacrifice. Sure. Sometimes your service in the house of God is sacrifice. God Many of you, you come to church and you expect until the prophet beg you. That is only when you know you can come to church. Many of you here, you are in church because of the little, little things they are giving you. Let God, be, or let, let your man of God remove that salary they are paying you and let's see whether you are going to be in church. A lot of people don't understand what service is. Service is your sacrifice. Some of you, you can you, you are expecting things from God. You look at yourself. You don't have money to give. You can be in church in the morning and sweep the church. It is sacrifice. You can be in the house of your prophet. You cut grass. Even without him calling you. You, do, you do certain things for him. Yes. Oh, that is sacrifice. Yes. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you look at the chairs. You clean the chair. That is sacrifice. Amen. Sacrifice. Wow. 
Look at me. There was a man in my church. I prayed for this man. I prayed for this man in Abuja. This man used to be a police officer, but he lost his job. True life story. He lost his job, no money, no marriage. He's up to 48 years old. The first wife left him, ran away. The second wife left him, ran away. So he's alone. He wanted to commit suicide. He heard about the church. He came to the church. I encouraged him. I gave him money. He said, no, sir. I did not come for the money. I heard that God is using you to change the destinies of people. I did not come for your money, sir. I used to be a police officer that has touched money. I sat with governors. I sat with potential men. Then now look at my, look at my life. He said, prophet, help me. And I look at this man. I was touched. He said, prophet, tell me what to do. And in my heart, I was emotional. I don't know what to tell him. I said, don't worry, be on fasting. Next week, I will tell you the mind of God. This man did not wait for me to give him instruction. Do you know what he did? He always comes to church in the morning. He sweeps the church. He cleans the chair. He cleans the altar. He was doing it with all of his heart. Next week, Sunday, I came to church and I discovered that the church has become more clean more than the time. I said, what is going on? And my assistant pastor told me that there's a man that normally comes to clean the church every day and he cleans the chair. I said, ah, Who is that man? He said, He doesn't know him, but it seems as if the man is the police officer. I, are you sure that's the man? He said, Yes. When I came to church on Sunday, as I was preaching, my eyes opened and behold, I saw what was responsible for the man's case. It was in church and I wore in the spirit and I went to the man and said, Oh man, because you've done this to the house of God, I enter into your situation and I break that to you from your life after that declaration two days after the former commissioner of police they called him of all he said where are you Miracle. come and take back your position now listen to me Miracle. when they called him when they called him to take back his position they gave him a car and a new house wow sacrifice it is Double for thy trouble. There are some of you under the sound of my voice. You might have been serving God here, yeah, and it seems as if God might not have answered you. You might have been doing certain things here, yeah, and it seems as if your prayer is not coming to pass. The Bible says, For thy shame, I shall give you double to everyone under the sound of my voice. I don't know the trouble you are going through, I don't know the situation you are going through, but I prophesy. If I give you amen, I give you double promotion. 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 Somebody chop my shots. Sit down. Number three thing you need. Number two, I said the sacrifice. Yes. Number three, your mouth must be full of praise. Wow. Powerful. Powerful. Let me tell you something. Powerful. If you are not thankful for the finger, you cannot see his hand. Mm -hmm. Say it again. If you are not thankful to God for the little he is giving to you, you will not see his hand. We live in a generation where a lot of people, they abuse the goodness and the kindness of God. God grants you access to little favor and you are ungrateful. I don't know. There is a man, I gave a man a prophecy somewhere in South Africa. I went to preach in a place called Limpopo. So, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I went to preach in Limpopo, Polokwane in South Africa. And I prayed for a man. And when I prayed for him, I gave him a prophecy. That God is about to change his story. After giving him that prophecy, two weeks after, he got in, in contact with an opportunity. He became a millionaire in less than two weeks. So when he became a millionaire in less, in less than two weeks, guess what happened? He stopped coming to church. When he stopped coming to church, I heard about the testimony. He did not even come to church to share the testimony. He bought himself cars. He started living large. So I told the man of God that, that invited me. I said, give me his number. I want to call him. I called him. I said, young man, how are you? 
He says, I said, do you know who's talking to you? He said, I say, I'm the man that prayed for you. He said, oh, prophet. His voice have changed. His skin have changed. And he thought that is the end of the world. He didn't know that the same place, the prophecy came, it can be collected. So when I, when I called him, he said, he said prophet, I, I, I am busy now. Can, can I call you back later? I have an appointment to catch up. Can I call you back later? He started doing big man for me. He caught the phone. Oh, my God. Somebody say, error. Somebody say error. When they called the phone on me, I was in the house with the prophet that he hosted me. And I said, oh God. This is how the heart of men is. Lord, let thy will be done. Guess what? Three days after, this I'm telling you is a real life story in the purple. Three days after, a strange number started calling my phone. I was not picking the call. Strange number. I don't know who was calling. So he called the first time, called the second time. On the third time, I picked the phone. I said, hello, who are you? He said, hello, sir, please. Am I speaking to prophet? Please, sir, please, sir, I want to see you. I said, who are you? He said, you, are the, you, you prayed for me. I am the man you prayed for. He said, I have problem. Problem. The government they are looking for. As I'm talking to you, if I don't see help, I might go to prison. I said, you will go to that prison. Hey. Fire. <laughs> To call this story short, he came to church like the same way he came from the beginning. He was looking tattered. He was looking restless. Why? Because he cannot thank God for the finger. Some of you here, God will use your prophet to bless you. Instead of using your substance to come and thank God, you are doing like this. You say, oh no prophet, wait. Let the big one come. When the big one come, they will come and give. Who told you that? You are messing with your life. The moment God bless you, even if it is little and you can thank God on this altar, God secures your testimony. Listen to me. Thanksgiving secures your testimony. The reason why you see a lot of people, a lot of political leaders, a lot of people, ministers, senators, you see them, they were in a bigger level and now they are in a low level. Why? Because they've abused authority of the altar. They thought they can do it on their own. Child of God, listen to me. Let, let me put something in your heart. I don't know how you started 2021. But if God be God, the little that God has given to you, make sure that you open your mouth and thank God. The little that God has given to you, make sure that you open your mouth and praise God. Listen to me. When you thank God for the little, God multiplies it and gives you the bigger. For the Bible said, I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I came to pray for somebody. I don't know if you are hearing the sound of my voice. It seems as, as if life is difficult for you. I prophesy. If I hear your amen, between now and tomorrow, enter into your kingdom. Amen. Between now and tomorrow, enter into your channel. Land. I see. Between now and tomorrow, enter into your channel. Land. I see. Between now and tomorrow, enter into your channel. Land. I see. Between now and tomorrow, enter into your channel. Land. I see. For the Bible said in the book of Malachi. He said there is a book of remembrance that will be written for everyone that fear God. To every one of you here that is tired of your situation. The Lord told me that your book is about to open. I don't care to know who has closed your book. I don't care to know who is sitting on the chapter of your destiny. I don't care to know who has prophesied evil in your life. But one thing I know. I heard from God. After the service, your book shall open by fire. Somebody let me hear that amen like thunder. Stand up on your feet. I mind it up. Listen to me, let me tell you something. Wrong identity makes you a non-entity. Wrong identity makes you a non-entity. Right identity makes you a celebrity. Wow. There are some of you here. After this service, God will be 
disconnecting you from certain people that is antagonizing favor in your life. If that amen is coming louder, it is who I am talking to. If that amen is coming louder, it is you I am talking to. Lift your two hands up to heavens. Begin to thank him for the word you've received. Wrong identity makes you a non-entity. How long will you dwell in that mountain? You stay too long in that mountain, and it is time for God to push you out. You stay. Wave it up to heaven. Wave it up. Thank Him. Thank Him. Begin to thank God. You are not thanking Him. Wave it up to God. Wave it up. I know. I want to see your hands of worship. You are the miracle walking God. You are the highest chat of days. You are the majesty. There is no one else like you. You are the destiny, destiny changer. There is no one else like you. You are the beginning and the end. There is no one else like you. Yahweh, your name is your two eyes. I just want the keyboard on a soft sound key. Lift your two hands up. Take it up a little bit. Close your eyes, everybody. Listen to me. Excuse me. Begin to imagine that thing you want God to do for you. Begin to see yourself entering into that level. Begin to see yourself getting a new job. Begin to see yourself getting married. Begin to see yourself driving your car and building your house. 
Sheka Tepo Shabagaba. Lift your two hands up. Oh my God, I see angels of the Lord everywhere. In this house. The hand of the Lord is taking me to a place right now. The hand of the Lord is taking me to a place. Why am I seeing the choir? I see a dove is touching them. I don't know. Lift your two hands the choir. Everybody in the choir. I see the spirit of the Lord is coming like a dove. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I see two of them that will receive the impartation. This is the impartation for service. Service. I see there is somebody in that choir your gift has been lost but I see restoration is coming to you and the children of Samuel look at the choir the hand of God is coming look at it like a dove 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 the choir Listen now, listen now, listen now. Yes, I see a touch. I see a touch. I see a touch. I see a touch. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Every one of them must receive this touch. Every one of them must receive this touch. This is an anointing for service. This is an anointing for service. This is an anointing for service. Close your eyes, don't look at me. Suicide and death is flying out. The spirit of death and suicide is flying out of this church. I see at my left hand side. There are seven of them that will come under the power of God. Lift your two hands up, lift your two hands up. At the counting of seven, the hand of the Lord will shadow you now. This is the spirit of death and suicide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one goes. Touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it.